Hello and welcome to another Teardown Tuesday. Today we're taking a look at a small electric motor. And if we take a look at the reading plate on it, you can see that this little guy is 115 volt, 6050 hertz, 9 watt, 1550 RPM. So pretty straightforward as far as motors go. Nothing crazy, single phase, half ampish, 0.58 amp, and it's thermally protected. So that'll make it interesting when we get it opened up to see how they thermally protected it. This style motor is pretty commonly found in refrigeration. It, you may be using it to, to blow air through a condenser, or you might be using it to move air around inside a, a system or blow air across an evaporator. But uh, very common little motors. You can mount them from the base down here on these little foot pads, or you can mount them from the back, threading into these threaded holes. The mounting hub here has a pin drive, so we've got pins here, and then this center shaft is threaded. And if we pull that off, you can see the threads down inside there. So let's go ahead and open this up and take a look at how it's put together. So let's go ahead and pop this Interesting. So right away you can see the output shaft of the, the motor here is not a bearing. It's just a small bushing and that bushing has been pressed in with a little retainer that lets it rotate a little bit so it can be perfectly aligned with the shaft but does not actually have any bearing surface. So they machined this as if they were going to put a bearing in there but there is no bearing. It's just a bushing. So the, the metal of the motor shaft actually rides directly on the metal of the bushing material. If we work this apart, we we'll probably find another bushing in the back here too. Yep. Yeah. So we've got the same situation back here. There's a little bit of grease in there, but not much, and just another bushing with the retainer pushed in on it. This is very light too. It's, it feels like aluminum, but it's a really thin casting. Alright, now we've got the motor core here. And you can see there's really nothing going on here. There's not any kind of brushes in here, because this is not a brushed motor. There's not any kind of centrifugal switches. There's no real additional stuff going on inside here, except for the basics the, and the thermal protection. So let's see if we can find the thermal protection. Taking a look at what they've done here, I'm going to guess that it's tucked down in over here. I wonder if we can get the windings out. Ah, uh, there's a trick. There's a trick. Looked like that was actually pushing the thermal overload in against the side of the, the housing here. Kept it held tight against. Yeah. So it just kind of squeezed and compressed that thermal overload here against the outer casing. Interesting the way this is put together, but I think we can get it apart. I'm just not sure how to get the, the two halves to separate. It's kind of clamshelled together, but it's not entirely clear what's holding the clamshell halves. You can see they had these little plastic covers over each soldered connection to prevent shorting. Remember too, when you look at a motor like this, all this wire is coated in enamel. That's why it doesn't short when it touches. It's not just bare copper. But they did put those covers over all the soldered ends. But here's our thermal overload. And let's see if we can get a closer look at that. So it's probably a little bimetal. We might be able to get it apart. That's and we'll cut it out of the winding. But you can see what it does is it just opens 
circuit and it de-energizes the winding down here. So now that we've got that apart, we can start to see what's going on here. And there's some kind of, I'll get my little pointer, there's some kind of insulator. It's not clear what that is. It's almost like a mica or something. But you can see there is some very small writing on the actual thermal switch itself. It looks like this thing's probably slid together and then squeezed to assemble it, but you can see one circuit goes around the outside here, and the other circuit goes through the inside here. So it would be nice if we could get this apart a little further. Yeah, look at that. There's a little tiny contact pad and a little tiny bimetal. I bet if we heat that up, but if we heat this surface, it'll probably pop. Let's try it here. Make sure you can see it. Ah, there it goes. Look at that. And now, we watch it cool down and it should pop back. You can see they've kind of rolled that metal into kind of a, a bowl shape. And when it heats up and the bimetals expand, it kind of crunches itself, forces itself into that open position. And it should auto reset. It should cool all the way down to the point where the forces on the bimetal make it snap back shut here. Yeah, there it goes. How cool is that? Let's do it again. Huh. Now that being a little electrical switch, it's putting load through this little tiny tab there. So if you were to have any kind of high current draw on this motor, like if it was locked up, when this switch auto reset, it would throw a little arc. Yeah, there it goes would throw a little arc when this came back in contact with the, the other side, the other pad. And eventually it could weld itself or burn itself open and stop working entirely. All right, so taking a look here, it does not look like I can get this apart without completely breaking apart every single winding. So I think this is as far as we can go with the main housing. All right, so let's talk about how it fails. The, the first and most obvious failure point would be these bushings. If this thing has been in service a long time, if it's in a harsh environment, if it's getting wet, if it's getting salt spray, you know, if it's near the ocean, whatever, that's gonna cause this to fail sooner. And, and bushings are not a long life component compared to a ball bearing or a, another type of bearing. So these will last a while, but eventually they will wear out. Other failures we could see here are electrical related. If we were to have an issue with this thing getting too hot, the entire enclosure getting too hot, we could potentially damage the, the coating on these windings and cause it to short. Otherwise, we're probably looking at our thermal overload here as our failure point. And it would be entirely possible for this to get damaged in a way that it did not come closed or didn't have good contact when it came closed. And the way this is installed, the way it's made, it's entirely unserviceable once it's down inside. You wouldn't try and take it apart and fix it. You would just replace the entire motor. If we talk about principles that are used in it, electromagnet is the big one. We've got the electromagnet going around each winding here. And then we've got motion control or motion support in the bushings. And then we've got the bimetal in the thermal overload. Neat little teardown, not too long. All right, thanks for watching. Hi folks, my name is Jack Kell and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. 
I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a smart care technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.